Welcome back to Tips Over Tea. This is episode 17. We had the great pleasure of speaking with John Luna Sparks about his journey from a debilitating neck injury to becoming an acupuncturist and Tai Chi teacher. So if you're wondering how acupuncture and or Tai Chi can be a healing modality, then make sure you grab your tea and listen in. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 17 of Tips Over Tea. We have the great pleasure of chatting with Dr. See, I told you, I keep wanting to say Dr. John Lewis Sparks. He is an acupuncturist. So still, I, I'm going to just keep calling you doctor. Apparently, I'm, I'm speaking something. <laughs> Call me doctor. That's too way too much pressure. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. Um, welcome so much. I'm so appreciative that you um, are spending a, a quick moment of your day with us. Um, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for inviting me, Nikki. It's so great to see you again and to uh, be with you. Yes, you're welcome. And likewise. Um, so, and, and just reading a little bit about you, you mentioned that you had um, a very debilitating neck injury that left you bedridden for four months, which I could not even imagine. <laughs> like, because I'm sure you're like a go person. You're like, Ugh. so how did that, how did you know to go to Chinese medicine as opposed to like traditional, traditional uh, medicine and things like that? Well, it was kind of a long path before I found Chinese medicine after mm -hmm. the injury. Mm -hmm. I like you said, I was bedridden for four months. I w had been at the gym. Um, uh, at the you know the reason why I was at the gym because I wasn't a gym goer uh, was because our son, my husband uh, Jeff, and I. Our son was five years old at the time, mm -hmm. very active boy. He was in a flying trapeze class, so I decided to join him, and it was fun. It was awesome, but I realized I have zero upper body strength, so I started mm -hmm. working out not really knowing how to work out. And I was straining to do that last pull up and I felt a rip in my neck and I ended up with bulging discs between uh, C5 and C7 in my neck and mm. radiating, radiating pain down both arms. And I knew, you know, something, something big had happened. Mm -hmm. so I went to the doctor and they sent me to physical therapy and uh, gave me cortisone injections. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't really understand the body or how it worked. Mm -hmm. After that first uh, injection, I didn't have any pain. I thought, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, this is awesome. Mm -hmm. So I went to the gym and I injured myself even more because nobody told me this is, you know, your problem is still there. The cortisone is just masking the pain. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, um, uh, by about a year into my recovery, I was well enough to go back to work. I was doing therapy with kids at Children's Hospital here in Oakland, California. And, but e between every patient, I would be laying down underneath my desk because mm -hmm. I had pain relief. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just completely sick and tired of being at home and feeling useless and feeling depressed and hopeless that anything was ever going to really get better. And around that time, I asked my doctor if I could have this cervical fusion surgery to mm. fuse right my neck mm -hmm. because the pain was so bad. He didn't really want to do it, but nothing was really, really getting me better. Uh, and so around that, around 12 months into my injury, a friend said, why don't you try acupuncture? Why don't you try Tai Chi? And I'd never done either. And I thought I have nothing to lose, so I did. I started acupuncture and I started feeling a bit better. And I was like, there's, there's something to this. Mm -hmm. I took my first Tai Chi class and I had five minutes of zero pain after that class, which was huge. Mm -hmm. and so I kept it up. And that's when the healing began. Wow. And I started learning how the body actually works. I, you know, what my injury involved, and what did I what I needed to do to get better? And and these folks in Chinese medicine and in Tai Chi really helped me understand what was going on. So yeah, so that was my uh my introduction to Chinese medicine out of necessity, and I'm so glad I found it. 
I love that. Um, I love that your friend introduced that to you, which is the whole purpose of this whole channel is just to introduce people to different forms of healing. Um, and I apologize for my puppy singing to you guys in the background. <laughs> um, hopefully she's not too distracting. Um, your puppy is contributing. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, I love that. I love that one that you were open to it because two, because like we grew up on, on, you know, white coats, hospitals, like that's, that is what medical care is typically. Um, so being open to different forms of healing is, is key to finding ways to heal yourself. And I am a big proponent of like, what will work for you? Right. I was really thrilled that I could cancel that surgery. Me too. For, and my doctor, my orthopedist was really happy as well because he really didn't want to do it. And, uh, and uh, um, you know, I just felt, feel like there's blessings everywhere, right? Because I don't know what it looked like at first, but that neck injury led me to a whole new path in life. And mm -hmm. I decided to study Chinese medicine a few years later because I wanted to help more people um, find out that there are ways of getting over really debilitating conditions without drugs, without surgery. Now, there's a lot of times when we do need Western drugs. There's a lot of time when we do need surgery and we can't avoid those. Mm -hmm. Many times when we don't. And uh, yeah, so I'm really happy to be able to talk to people and, and help people about uh, with their problems. Yeah, I, I agree. I, well, of course, prevention is always best if possible, like living a holistic lifestyle in general is it's helpful. Um, but I, I, I'm, I'm a huge proponent of what can you do naturally first? And then if it, if that didn't work, like if all the natural stuff didn't work, um, then maybe seek, um, allopathic medicine. Of course, mm -hmm. if your life is dependent upon it, like a dangerous car accident or something, you know, mm -hmm. open chest wound or something, of course. Um, but um, if it's something like that, like pain, um, gut issues and things like that, see what you can do naturally first, because what you do at that moment is a long, it's going to have a lasting impact on your life, right? Like, mm -hmm. so I love that. Um, so you incorporated both acupuncture and Tai Chi at the same time. Um, that's interesting. How did you know to put those two together? Because they're different practices. Right. Well, I um, I started at this Tai Chi school called White Magnolia mm -hmm. Tai Chi uh, in mm -hmm. California. And Dr. Miriam Marcellet was my head teacher, and she still is today. Mm -hmm. That was 2005 when I started there. and she just infused her classes with so much talk about chi and cultivating chi, expressing chi, uh, circulation. And I was really fascinated. I had no idea what any of this talk was about, mm -hmm. what chi was. Um, I remember I had taken a Tai Chi class back when I was an undergrad mm -hmm. in my 20s. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I was like, this is boring. This is so slow. Uh, and I was like, man, I'm not, this isn't for me. Yeah. Uh, but then I really, truly developed a different kind of appreciation for the internal nature of this practice mm -hmm. that uh, really gets you in touch with not just your body, but everything around you. Mm -hmm. So I kept up Tai Chi because uh, not only because I was having less pain, I was able to handle the stress of my job at Children's Hospital that much better. My digestion improved, my sleep improved, and uh, it just opened a whole new world of being, you know, and of living in a way that I wasn't familiar with at all. So, um, and and I really felt like this is how people can take charge of their health. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I loved, I, you know, I, I, I don't like being dependent on someone else for, um, for everything, for my healthcare. You know, I had a relapse, um, actually a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. um, 
up my neck. Um, I, I forget what happened, but um, I ended up with radiating pain down one arm. So just out of curiosity, I went back to my Western doc just to see, okay, well, it's been about, you know, 15 years since that first injury. Maybe, you know, medicine has changed um, because I, I've, I've discovered myself how Chinese medicine can help. And really what my doctor did was send me down to the pharmacy to get two different prescriptions. Oh. And I thought, oh man, okay, we need to do more work. Mm. We really need to do more work to let people know yeah. what is out there and what is possible yeah. um, so that we can, uh, so that they can take charge of their health. Yeah, I highly agree. And I was on a, um, in a clubhouse room the other day, like how can we, start this collaboration like with allopathic doctors who don't have time to really learn the whole history of their patients to figure out how what they're exhibiting what has contributed to that in their lifestyle right like mm -hmm. their mindset their diets their environment and all that they don't have time for that they just see symptoms and this is what's going to fix so like how can we can create this collaborative environment where a doctor will see this and they'll say, well, let's start with this. I'll send you to John. You see if this acupuncture or, of course, talking with the client or patient. I do clients because I'm not a doctor <laughs> with patient and saying, well, based on what you've shown that you're having experiences with, um, perhaps this, this or this could work for you. Acupuncture, Tai Chi or yoga. Which one do you think you would like to try first as opposed to going down this road that could possibly like change the whole makeup of you know the in, your internal makeup just with chemicals and stuff that we'd have to introduce and create other side effects that's just you know that type of thing so exactly i agree definitely um i gotta say that you know at the same time mm -hmm. um events of western medicine what i have experienced in my practice because people do know that i specialize in sports medicine and sports medicine acupuncture and also mental health acupuncture mm -hmm. Mm. Um, I do have quite a number of orthopedists referring their patients to us mm. and psychologists referring their psychotherapy clients to us, those who might have maybe reached a plateau yeah. in, their, um, in their work um, and general medicine doctors. Uh, so I had a nurse practitioner who really is into, uh, you know, uh, helping her patients um, think about uh, um, complementary approaches like mm -hmm. acupuncture as a first line. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so that's uh, mm -hmm. you know, a patient called me last week who did a Google search on sports acupuncture. And I said, how did you know about sports acupuncture? Because right. there are a lot, of, a lot of us around here. And he said, my uh, orthopedist said, you should look into sports acupuncture. And I was like, oh, did they... Did, did, they, did they give me my name? I'm like, oh, maybe that, hopefully that orthopedist knows me, but they didn't. And uh, the patient just Googled sports acupuncture, found us. And I'm so, you know, um, you know, I, you know, there's a lot of uh, docs out there that feel uh, like they want other options. And of course they want the best outcome. For too, them. Yeah. yeah. I, I absolutely trust that they did not go to med school to learn how to just give meds and spend right. seven minutes with patients. They really had a heart that they want to help somebody live better. Mm -hmm. So, right, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. yeah, the docs that refer to me, they don't, they, you know, they do not want to prescribe meds as a first line all mm -hmm. the time. They do not want to re uh, refer for surgery. Mm -hmm. So, I wonder if that's because you're in California. <laughs> I swear it's more holistic out there so much than um, than on the East Coast. We're working on it. I'm trying to bring it <laughs> bring it in more so. <laughs> yes, I want more and more people to get to know Dr. Nikki too. <laughs> Received. <laughs> um, acupuncture, how exactly does that work? Because, um, you know, people have a fear of needles or I should say this. What um, what are some of the common questions you receive, and how do you put a patient's potential potential patient's mind at ease to go ahead and um, do the acupuncture? Like, how does it work? What what have you? And I I did I've not heard of sports acupuncture nor mental health acupuncture, so I love that too. So you could speak to that a little bit. Sure. I 
So after Chinese medicine school, mm -hmm. uh, which is a long, grueling four-year process, I got to take the state boards, I took the national boards, uh, I decided to specialize in sports medicine. And I found Dr. Whitfield Reeves, and I'm so mm -hmm. happy to say his name uh, so that other people can hear him, his name as well, because he's really an incredible mentor. He is an ac the acupuncturist who introduced the field and practice of sports acupuncture to North mm -hmm. America back in the 80s. And he got together with Janet Travell, uh, who was a physician, actually JFK's, John F. Kennedy's physician, mm -hmm. uh, who was, and she was really into, uh, developed the idea of trigger points mm. uh, in the body, areas where muscle fibers uh, contract and, um, and, and can lead to pain and range of motion problems. Anyway, he, he ran into her at a conference and, and uh, back, I think in the 70s, mm -hmm. and said, I admire your work. What would happen if we put a needle into these trigger points? These mm -hmm. points where that, that, um, that you, are, you have your approach with them, but what if we put a needle into them? And they combined heads and there was born sports medicine acupuncture. So I studied with him. I completed his apprenticeship to a sports medicine acupuncture training program. I'm um, actually an apprenticeship program and um, two times uh, because there's so much rich information. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, and as soon as I came, brought his skills back to my clinic, uh, Patients were just walking out the door going, oh, my gosh, I can't believe how I'm feeling now. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, uh, so let's see, your original question was, how does it work? And what do, what do patients say? You know, a lot, I do get a lot of patients who are needle phobic. Right. They do not want, they hate the idea of acupuncture, um, of needles going into them. And they only come back because they're getting better. Mm -hmm. uh, and they only come back also because so many of them came to us saying, my provider told me there's nothing else they can do for me. And I've seen three or four or five providers and they all said the same thing. And it can be really satisfying to talk to them about what the possibilities are with acupuncture. Uh, so, um, uh, for example, when I was talking about a trigger point, what a needle can do, and an acupuncture point, um, just insertion into a point can help uh, call, basically what, what we're doing is calling your own blood to heal yourself. Mm. When there's an injury, often there is a lack of blood flow to that area, yeah. which leads to pain, which leads to circulate, uh, range of motion problems. Mm -hmm. We have a, an injury, like a, a tear in a rotator cuff muscle, for example, the body does a really good job of healing itself. Mm -hmm. It lays down scar tissue, right? And um, and instead of muscle fi muscle fibers kind of you know they they contract and they relax to help us move mm -hmm. and breathe and, and everything. Um, but when we have an injury, the body lays down this matrix of really fibrous cartilage to really protect us. And it builds a wall around the injury, mm -hmm. but it does kind of a too good of a job. <laughs> but then when the body tries to move, it can't. And then we feel pain and then we can't raise the arm above the shoulder, things like that. Mm -hmm. So what a targeted approach like sports acupuncture can do, identifying trigger points, also something called motor points, where nerves feed into the muscle to activate the muscle, mm -hmm. we can activate points like that just with an acupuncture point, maybe adding a little bit of electrical stimulation to it to um, get that muscle firing again, to break up scar tissue so we can reform healthy tissue that contracts and relaxes as it's supposed to, mm -hmm. to bring blood to your areas that need healing and flush out waste products that are trapped in there. Yeah, that's how sports acupuncture it, it really you know works. Um, I'm sure it works in a lot of other different ways, but you know that's uh, it's one thing that you know people. I, I really like to educate people about what we're doing. Mm -hmm. 
for so long early in my injury, I had no idea. And I was in the dark and I didn't like being in the dark about what, mm -hmm. what, did it, what was it going to take to get better? Yeah. So I really like to spend a lot of time with folks, letting them know this is what we're doing. Now, some people, they just, they, you know, they don't really want to know. <laughs> yeah. Just, just, just do your work and that's fine. Yeah. So many people, you know, they really want to know. Yeah, I'm that person. I love the science behind behind yeah. all of that. <laughs> right. Um, that's so interesting. Um, and it it does. I could see how if you go from chronic pain or even an injury pain, um, and that relief, like when you're in pain, you just your brain is like, I don't care. Just fix the pain. <laughs> it's hard to think. It's hard to sleep. You don't want to eat. At least for me. Um, yeah. Right. So. Right. Right. And I think that what is um, a lot of approaches just miss getting to the root cause of the problem. Yeah. And that's what I love about this medicine. We can really work with folks to really try to identify the root cause of the problem and then treat right there at the root. Yeah. So people not only get better, but they stay better. Yeah. And that's the, that's supposed to be the point. <laughs> <laughs> um, and tell, tell us, can you talk a little bit about Tai Chi? I've seen it. And to be honest with you, I had the same sentiment you had initially, like it's so slow. However, I could see how if you do slow down, how that can be beneficial. But what are some of the things that, what did you experience when you reintroduced it to your, your life? And then like with clients or patients, um, when they come, what did, what did, what made them decide to start using Tai Chi as a healing modality? Because, um, yeah, I am asking people to look more inside because it's really, it's really not just your acupuncturist that is helping you. It's right. not just folks like you, right? Fitness coach, health coaches that we have to, it's a partnership. And so uh, uh, we have to do our part as the patient. I had to do a lot of work as the patient mm -hmm. uh, to take charge of my own health. And uh, so, and that's as, uh, it can be as simple as, let's notice how you're standing. Mm -hmm. Tai Chi, we're slowing things down, but we're also trying to develop an inner awareness, which translates to this heightened external awareness. So what I'm saying in that is, um, uh, you know, someone who, who comes in with, with back pain, let me see if I can stand up and still, and still you can still yeah. see. That. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm just going to be asking them, how are you, but let's look at how you're standing. Mm -hmm. Are you with your knees locked? You know, someone with back pain um, uh, might be locking their knees um, and um, as opposed to standing, with like a, a gentle knee bend and maybe a little hip hinge, still with a strong spine. Um, because in Tai Chi, we really want to help open our bodies, um, not only front and back, side to side, up and down, all directions. Mm -hmm. uh, and just noticing, for example, I help, you know, I say, okay, then just, you know, and so we, we uh, I teach this, this, this very easy, you know, way to, uh, of, of paying attention to how you stand. Mm -hmm. Say, okay, next time you feel the pain, that's your trigger. Notice mm -hmm. how you're standing. Maybe shift your weight towards the balls of your feet. Still keep all four corners of the feet planted to the earth, but maybe shift a little bit to the balls of the feet. Notice if you are a heel stander. Mm -hmm. I used to be a heel stander and I used to have a lot of back pain. Mm -hmm. Shift the weight towards the balls of my feet. And this is the, like if this is my foot, mm -hmm. here's the heel, here's the toes. Here, shifting it to the balls of the feet made a huge difference in the distribution of my weight um, in my body and decreased the pain so much. It's something I could do. Uh, yeah. Those are the things I like to help people with. So I say, you know, notice it and notice where you are when you're standing that way. Are you brushing your feet? Are you pumping gas mm -hmm. everywhere? You know, are you waiting in the grocery line? Um, so, uh, you know, um, 
Tai Chi is, you know, more involved than that, but we always go back to the foundation. So those are some of the foundations. Notice how you stand. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I can imagine like if you're having a, um, a stressful day, it gives you the ability to realize where you're tense in your body too. Like, well, it doesn't even have to be a stressful day, but just because a lot of times stress is so hidden from microaggressions that we don't even realize it, um, that we're tense. <laughs> um, and then having to really pay attention to your body as you move through those motions, um, I can imagine will bring that type of awareness too. Right, right. One thing in Tai Chi, my, uh, Miriam, my, my, my teacher, mm -hmm. uh, always repeated to me uh, 15 years ago that she still repeats today is, John, lower your shoulders. John, tuck your chin. Because I have this habit of jutting the chin. Mm -hmm. And I think I do that with stress. Mm -hmm. And I do this with stress. And most of us, many of us, especially for us on, on technology these yeah. days, yeah a lot more during this year-long pandemic that we've had doing stuff like this we are naturally more tense and we go into this uh this self-protective mode it's kind of like you know that scar tissue thing our bodies knows how to heal mm -hmm. our bodies our nervous systems also know how to protect us mm -hmm. they help us go into this more protective forward rolled shoulders up forward flexion self-protection mode Mm -hmm. of stress mm -hmm. but when we're doing that with repetitive motion like on a keyboard we're going to develop you talked about microaggressions we're going to develop micro traumas mm -hmm. develop, you know and, and micro these injuries that are re repetitive injuries uh very slight tears in muscles over time mm -hmm. and it, our body develops this new pattern of being which is painful mm -hmm. So with Tai Chi, with acupuncture, that's it's all about reversing those patterns to open up, yeah. to lower, to, you know, just to increase circulation. I love it. That's awesome. Um, and you have, you do still teach Tai Chi classes online, right? We do. We do. Okay. We're, I think we, we shifted to Zoom uh, last March mm -hmm. and, um, and our, our school did an incredible job mm -hmm. of of transitioning to Zoom. And so we still have these classes on Zoom. And then about six weeks ago, we started uh, doing some classes outdoors. Uh, and it was just a very emotional time, just getting back together with everybody to share Tai Chi in person again. I imagine. Yeah. That's awesome. So we have just um, under two minutes or just over two minutes left. Okay. So are there any tips you would like to leave anyone with? I will also get your website, make sure I put it on the, um, the YouTube channel in case somebody wants to sign up for any um, Tai Chi classes. Sure. Um, any tips you would like to leave or anything that you'd like to share if you got an event coming up, especially if anybody from Cali gets to catch this, because um, you're in Berkeley, correct? Yeah, we're in Berkeley. Mm -hmm. Berkeley and uh, we are, um, you know, very excited to be seeing our acupuncture patients in person again mm -hmm. we uh you know things are opening up in california mm -hmm. um, more and more and, and i know across the country and at the same time you know people should be aware that medical practices are still um uh, uh advised not to open up and i like that i so we still practice with all our full uh covid um uh uh, protocols in place mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah folks are, are welcome to to visit our website what white magnolia health.com get to know about our practice about me about our uh, acupuncture associate dr. Zoe Linton who's also an incredible practitioner really into sports medicine as well mm -hmm. women's health and uh and our tai chi classes we have a whole tab on there about our tai chi classes that are happening and we're welcoming new students every day it's been really nice because people you know there's a lot of uh has been a lot of isolation in mm -hmm. the pandemic and uh even when we couldn't visit uh, practice together in person mm -hmm. it was really nice to have this community of regular uh, students uh, to to be together online yeah. on a weekly basis to 
to build our energy, to, um, to share it with each other. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, and I can imagine with, with things changing so drastically, seemingly overnight, um, that is like a tool to have in the toolbox to help with managing that stress. If you, because it's like in our t lifetime, anyway, this is unprecedented. Like we've not experienced anything like this. So I imagine that's a great tool to have in the toolbox um, for dealing with some of the stresses. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. People really, people really make, for example, things like Tai Chi uh, just a part of their wellness routine. It's something they can do on their own. Um, mm -hmm students they wake up and it's the first thing they do in the morning even if it's just for 10 minutes mm -hmm. uh, we had we had, uh one one of our students um uh mentioned in a class recently that whenever they put something in the microwave they fill the time in the <laughs> doing tai chi until the bell rings <laughs> yeah because it's something about putting something in a microwave it feels like it takes forever even if it's just two minutes <laughs> <laughs> So that's a good use of time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, that we are at time. Speaking of time, thank you so much, John. It was such a great pleasure speaking with you today. Oh, I appreciate your time. Thank you, Nikki. So great to spend this morning with you. Yeah, you're welcome. You. Um, else, go ahead. Sorry. I said great to see you again. You too. You too. I, I, I'm so glad we met two years ago. Mm -hmm. Last year, whatever. <laughs> but anyway, glad to have met you and glad we're, we're still able to stay in touch. Um, if you are catching this broadcast after the fact, uh, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can watch all of these um, different chats because you never know. There's something that you could use, something you may speak to somebody and they're like, I need help with this. And you're like, oh, I remember this video I saw on the YouTube channel. So uh, make sure you subscribe, ring the bell, um, share anything that that would resonate with you or someone else. Reach out to John if you would like to learn more about Tai Chi. If you're in a Berkeley, Cali area, reach out to John for acupuncture, Tai Chi, all that. So thank you again. I will have your website up there so that people can reach out. And I really appreciate you. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you. Same to you, Nikki. Hope to thank see you soon. You too. <laughs> Let me end this chat. Thanks again for tuning in. Make sure you like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified anytime we upload a new video or go live. And we'll see you next time.